GNU Parallel, where have you been all of my life? I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. About three years ago, somebody, some coding guy, twitch.tv, you may have heard of him. He goes like this, yo, yo, baby. He actually doesn't talk like that at all. Uh, he doesn't talk like that at all. And he's probably a CIA CIA plant, anyways. Uh, anyways, he told me, why aren't you using GNU Parallel? And I was just like, GNU Parallel? I just use Xargs, that's all I need. And then it turns out, no, I do I do need Parallel. Now I use it like every day, of, like literally every day of my life. I love GNU Parallel. I love it. It's the greatest thing in the universe. It's the greatest thing. I was recently trying to figure out how likely a bunch of end-to-end -end tests were, uh, were to be flaking. And I wanted to gather some stats about their pass-fail rates on my local machine before including them in the broader test suite. These tests uh, run for a long time and they execute extensive scenarios against live services over HTTP. In this post, I'll share an approach I ended up using with GNU Parallel. This is a great case for GNU Parallel, by the way. This is so good. You don't even know. It. You don't even know why it's so good. It's so good. It's so effing good. I love it. You love it. We all love it. Okay. Uh, quick aside, if you want to follow along and run the upcoming examples in your own t terminal, use this command to generate some test files. Uh, they'll emulate a flaky test by sleeping between 5 to 15 seconds, then randomly exiting with the failure. Xcode 1 or success. Xcode 0. Now that's something I can do. Okay. Here we go. Parallel. Echo, sleep, blah, 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 print pass. All right. Print fail. Exit 1. Let's go. Potentially flaky test. And I'm not really sure what this this is right here, but okay, this seems exciting. I don't uh, I I don't know what this syntax is. What is this? Is this fish? Is this Python? Is this new Rust? Rust 2.0? What is this? What the hell does that even mean? But it, is this really something I don't even know about? Turbo fish? It, I think it's a turbo fish, but it has too many turbos on it, and so I don't know what it does. New bash, bash two, bash better. Bash me, daddy. What is it called? Run it. Refuse. Uh, typically, to gather flakiness stats, I've used a couple of the nested loops, one for each test I've wanted to run, and another loop uh, for each attempt. I like doing uh, this kind of stuff in Bash for simplicity slash portability. Test. Classic array in Bash. Uh, the, my general rule of thumb is that if you see an array in Bash, you've programmed too much Bash. You've just you've done too much. You've done too much. This is this is how you know it's time to switch to a new language. For test in test at this at me daddy uh, do for each attempt of that test a one through ten uh, for attempt sequence one through ten capture the timestamp now test me pipe everything to dev null except for errors apparently keep the errors in pipe standard out to there what's the previous status that uh, this is get the you know get the previous pro uh, whatever previous executions exacode calculate duration duration of the test bam bam don't you love doing math and bash. It's the all the dollar double print open, do your math, double paren close. D don't you just love it? It just makes you want to just love it. Uh, printf, uh, do all this one. If status equals this, then pass, else fail. Is this why I always fail doing bash? Because I never remember when to use the dollar sign and when not to use the dollar sign. I feel like you're supposed to use the dollar sign here. Why is there no dollar sign being used here? I can't bash. I cannot bash. It is an impossible language. It's Why? Porque Maria. Always use the dollar sign. I thought it was always use the dollar sign. People make fun of Bash for the stupidest f f reasons. Really? My, again, my general rule of thumb is don't. Once you hit here, I feel like once you start seeing this, you're you're, you're starting to you're starting to get into that region where you should maybe go a little bit different. Uh, this approach ended up being tediously slow, though, since the tests take a while to execute. Running them sequentially wasn't going to cut it. Exactly. Don't do it this way. Parallel me, daddy. And then you don't even need this. You don't, you can use Xargs or you can just use parallel itself. You know what I mean? Uh, this approach ended up being tediously slow, though, uh, since the tests uh, take a while to execute. Running them sequentially wasn't going to cut it. I knew about GNU Parallel, but I've never used it before. Man Parallel, and 15 minutes later, later I was living life in the parallel lane. It's really simple. You just dash J it, hit him with the dash K, call it a day. It's like that simple. Sometimes you don't want dash K. Uh, rewriting the above work in parallel ended up looking like this. Do your tests. Parallel progress, jobs five, delay two, timeout 360, uh, shuffle, results, uh, out CSV, and then do all of this. Bash, one, 
super turbo fish tests, ultra turbo fish sequences. I really don't know what this is. I still don't quite know what this is. My assumption of how to read this is that, okay, we're going to execute bash with the argument from here, which is going to be determined by this. No, 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 that's not it. It has to be something different. There's something different here. I just don't know what it is. My guess is it run. It, I, okay, I'm redoing it. I'm redoing it. We're going to run test one through one through five, right? We're going to have one through five go in here, and then we're going to do that 10 times. And this is an inclusive sequence from zero, including 10, so 10 times. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking, right? So this is all the values. So 50 tests. We're going to run 50 tests, and we're going to do this with a uh, with all this beautiful stuff right here. Five separate jobs, all that kind of stuff. Bash arrays, test files, shuffle the order. Yeah. Uh, GNU parallel specific? No, this is not parallel specific. This must be a bash thing. I don't know about the tripler. I honestly have never seen the tripler in my life. Uh Okay, that just expands then. Huh. Okay. I didn't know that. But pretty cool. There's some there's something that goes on there that I don't quite get. I don't understand this this yet. But anyways, pretty neat. I don't do a lot of uh I don't do a lot of that. You know what I mean? I'm not a big basher. Anyways, uh the joy of finding the right tool for the job can't be beat. More performance functionality with less code. Let's go into a bit of detail. So here here's a little story about how I use parallel. I had this thing where I'd have to go query the database uh in the Netflix game stuff. Uh get out a bunch of uh data from there. And then in a separate database altogether, I'd then have to query more data. And then in a separate database from that, I'd have to query more data. And to be able to query each one of those, I had to be able to actually get the data here, do some morphing, query the next part, do some morphing, query the next part, and then I'd be able to get it. I got some Gen Z hair going on. Yeah, baby. I'm finally a Zoomer. Um, and so Parallel was fantastic. Because what I could do is I could get like a nice big query for the very first one that just dumps out rows of data. And then I take each one of those standard outs and just one line at a time, pipe it into the next one, which then pipe it into the next one. And so I could do the whole flow, just raging it. And I could say, okay, I can only have at max 10 connections to the database. So jobs dash J10, right? And it just, it just is so fantastic because then you don't write the parallelizing code yourself. So many people write code in which they write the actual parallelizing themselves when you shouldn't do that. Just use parallel. Use GNU parallel. It's so fantastic because then your program becomes really small and simple. And it's just like one step at a time. Or you could just use JavaScript. Why would you ever use JavaScript to write your parallelization like this? That's so stupid, right? It's already there. You can use JavaScript to do your querying, which I was forced to do because we had a library that connected to all the databases in there. So I had to do that. But nonetheless, I used JavaScript for just writing the basic item. And then I would parallel over the top of it. I was joking. No, you weren't. You wanted JavaScript. You know you did. Now you're caught in 4K on YouTube trying to avoid that. Okay, don't pause the music, you SOB. Imagine using Go. Weight groups. Gross. You know it. That's it, Mario Ben. You know what I'm going to say to you, Mario Ben? It's -a me, a Mario. Oh, yes. I'm going cancelable inside of a YouTube video. Anyways, parsing or passing inputs in GNU Parallel. You specify a command that is able to execute in parallel. In the example provided, the, co the command is bash one. The one is a placeholder that gets replaced by each input value. If you have more than one input, you can use two, three, etc. The inputs to the command are specified after the triple colon operator. In this case, the inputs are, let's see, are the array of tests. <coughs> the array of tests. Uh, the sequence of numbers is zero, uh, 1 through 10. These inputs are provided to the command in all possible combinations. Nice. Okay. Nice. Beautiful. So in this case, we have five test scripts that we want to run uh, each 10 times parallel. All right. Controlling concurrency. P uh, parallel provides a number of options to use to avoid uh, resource contention. Here are a few that I found useful. Dash J. Get those jobs out. Parallel will execute as many jobs as you have CPU cores. A delay ensures that each job waits for two seconds before starting, preventing a thundering herd problem. Like it. Timeout terminates any job that has been running for over an hour. Beautiful. Uh, runs the jobs in a shuffled order. Again, beautiful. 
Very, very beautiful. Click that for B-Scale. What about node closure? I don't even know what you're talking about at this point. Okay, we're trying to talk here. Is, there, is parallel written in Go? I would assume not. It's old. I'm pretty sure it's older than Go. Uh, and it's also GNU. I'm sure it's just C, baby. I'm sure it's just a little C, baby. Ooh, let's rewrite it in Rust. Oh, dang. Hey, Bisco, I just clicked the little uh, firmware thing just for you. Uh, by default, the output of your command will be printed to your terminal. However, in the case, since I wanted to capture the stats using Parallels' capability to output to CSV files instead was very helpful. Results, this. Uh, yeah, you can definitely do that. I usually just, you know, I usually just do like a little little pipe. Little, I, I do that. Sometimes I'll T along the way if I have multiple Parallels I'm running. Uh, I'll put the job completion results to the given file, which includes duration, exacodes, and captured standard out, uh, standard error. Progress prints live progress as the jobs are executing. The CSV file ends up looking like this. Only the first lines of it for brevity. What about all the error you're capturing? Right? Look at all that goodness. Look at all that goodness. This is great. Uh, it's trivial to use this uh, uh, output to aggregate charts, uh, chart or aggregate slash chart stats. Exploring further. Uh, this is barely scratching the surface of what Parallel can do. I strongly recommend the excellent free and funny book by the Parallel's author, Ole Tangi. The first chapter takes about 15 minutes to get through and covers 80% of what you're likely going to use. By the way, this look at this. Look at what you can do. Limiting, limiting this. It's so good. Parallel is so damn good. It is so damn good. You gotta, you gotta use it. Okay, this has been a public service announcement. Okay, this is not even a prime time react. This is just me telling you, learn to use the tools that are available. Okay, learn it. Happy, happy parallel alley. Read, uh, dude, while Prime is reading, start talking about JavaScript. No, I'm trying to tell you about GNU parallel and you're talking about JavaScript. The name is the parallel agenda.